welcome to Burger Box number two live stream. We're cooking live with Chef Firestone. We're cooking a monster, monster bone and ribeye from the Gordons. And uh, what would you, if you had to name this, what would you, what would you give this a name of? Just a standard cut at Firestone's restaurant. Just no, a standard no. cut. <laughs> no, I mean, like, would you, would you name it like, this is maybe this is some, Texas maybe, or? Well, I mean, they say everything's big in Texas. Welcome to Erie. Welcome to Erie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got people on Zoom cooking with us. They have the all the ingredients that we're going to go over in just a second. And um, yeah, I'm going to let Chef Firestone take it away. I'll fill, fill, facilitate any questions coming from the Zoom crowd. First things first, um, how was everything packaged in the boxes that you guys got? Was it all was it all good? It was. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So Great. they said it was for people on Facebook. <laughs> That's good. Um, so everything was packaged well. That's great. Um, chef, I'm going to let you take it away and let's to talk about the ingredients and why you chose these ingredients for this, uh, for this cook. Right. So, well, when you first come to me about it, we said we want to do a steak. So the first thing that came in was a nice bone-in ribeye for me. Um, and then we thought, well, it's going to be for more than just one person. So that's why we opted with the really big, thick cut. So we can demonstrate how we can cook a nice big steak. And a lot of this stuff can be translated when we go outside to cook on the grill during the summer too, which we're probably going to do one of these yeah, in the summer, summer as yeah. well. And it's, what's great about this, what we do in the restaurant, is we like to cook a nice big, thick steak like it's for sharing. Uh, it's more of a, like, I would say, not Argentinian style, but they're, they're very accustomed with, when they cook their steak, they like to let it rest and slice it, and then everyone enjoys. Yeah. And I really like that presentation and cooking like that, especially for a couple few people. I mean, you can have a few people around for dinner. It just lends itself to that real nice. And then we awesome. wanted some potatoes, so we went with the smashed Yukon cold potatoes. Again, what I like about this is that you can be prepped ahead of time. We're all about prep, staying ahead, because... I don't know about you people, but when I have people over, we start cooking and drinking and having a good time. Time goes fast, so it does. anything you can prep and stay ahead. Yeah, it just seems to help the the dinner or the evening go a little quicker. That's nicer. a great point. So for for you folks on Zoom, did you get a chance to boil your potatoes ahead of time? It's okay if you didn't, but I just want to check and see if you all did or if anybody didn't. Okay, we got one did. We did. And they did. <laughs> we got two two did. Two down. We're cooking. Did everybody? Oh, did. Oh, you're cooking later. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. So we are gonna go through it. We do have a raw one that we brought and we're gonna do that, you know, like that kitchen magic that you see on TV where they throw a potato in the pot and then it's magically done in two seconds. So uh, we are gonna do that just so that you have the whole process down. Uh, but we did prepare them ahead of time and it's just super easy. You just throw them in a pot and boil them until they're done. So that's it. Um, what's next? What else we got? So we also have the, uh, the sour cream, it's this uh, scallion lemon zest sour cream that we're going to serve with the uh, Cajun smashed potatoes. So okay. first thing we wanted to do is make sure that we had our steak out. Like I said uh, in the instructions, that I like to let the steak sit out at room temp. Why is that? Well, you're getting it room temp, it's going to take the chill off of it obviously. So when you go to cook it, you're not taking from a refrigerated 36 degrees. Yeah. to the hot pan so it's going to cook a little even for you it's going to cook quicker for you actually so you don't have to drop that temperature your temperature okay. is up instead of coming from a, like i said a cold state gotcha. uh, the, it's also the proteins are white more relaxed you know there's a lot of science that goes in when you're cooking the meat so like i said we're going to talk about the malleur effect okay that's where the amino acids and sugars get to a certain heat and that's where you get the caramelization and the crust. We're all about the crust too, obviously, when we cook these steaks. That's yes. a big important thing. crust we trust. And 100%. Um, so having that at the room temp does help out with that. Okay, and so wonderful. I highly recommend that. Uh, the, uh, so, and then we also have, now this was not in the instructions, this was my fault, I forgot to add this, but we also have a, uh, like, a like a cookie sheet with a, with a rack on it. Now, if you guys don't have the rack, um, no problem. Uh, you just go ahead and use a cookie sheet and throw that in your preheated oven at 400 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and preheat your oven right now uh, to 400 and go ahead and throw a cookie sheet in it. If you have the rack, go ahead and throw that at there too. Okay? Because uh, I guess once we're doing everything in the cast iron skillet, then we're going to move the steak to the oven to cook the rest of the way and that will help that. And then while the steak is cooking in the oven, we're going to smash the potatoes in the same cast iron pan that we use to cook the steak, right? Yep. Okay. 
So, um, does anybody have any questions on Zoom before we begin? Or on Facebook, if you've got questions like, you know, what am I watching here? Feel free, ask, ask away. So, uh, does anybody have any questions on Zoom? All good, excited and hungry? Good. <laughs> All right, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Chef, I'll let you take it away. And where would you like to move, begin? I'm, I'm kind of his, his assistant this time around. So whatever he needs me to do, I'll just be there and I'll be facilitating any questions that you guys have on Zoom as well as Facebook uh, while, while Chef is cooking. And then he can answer the questions. Does anybody have any questions before we begin? No, all set. All right, we're all set. So I see this fancy salt here, Chef. What is what, this? What is, is the this? salt that we use for for our steak? So this is the Nor this is a uh, Norwegian sea flake salt. Okay. I prefer the flake salt. It's a cleaner salt. It gives you a nicer crust that we're trying to try to form on the on the on the on the steak when we get through it like that. Um, it's not as salty, so you can keep. We'll, you'll, as you'll see as we're cooking, we're going to continue to season as we go through. Okay. Um, an iodized salt. I would never use iodized salt, obviously, on a steak or anything okay. to like. Just for your proteins to cook with, to be yeah. honest with you. Iodized Toast. salt will add kind of like a, how would you describe an iodized salt flavor on a steak? It's kind of like tingy or like yeah, it's tangy? Only, I don't know. Way? It just gives it a real tinny flavor, I guess, yeah. if you want to call it. I don't know. For me, it just doesn't work. Um, kosher salt works really well, too. Okay. There's nothing nothing wrong with using kosher salt. I just, my personal preference happens to be the flake sea salt. Okay. Uh, on any protein that I cook at the restaurant, that's what we use. All right, fair enough. And that's all we're using is just straight salt the, or the, the, the flake salt on the steak okay uh, so feel free salt. to put black pepper if you want to um, but the biggest thing that we like to, to show off especially since we have the butcher shop in the restaurant is how good our cuts are and to get a good true representation of that flavor we want to just use the salt just to bring that out and that is it okay. and then if you want to add sauce like we are putting a truffle butter on this at the mm -hmm. end of it so yeah and that's you know, that'll help the flavor. Because why well. why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah, it's truffle with butter. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, okay, so we've got rosemary, we've got thyme, we've got our flake salt, we've got our ribeye, we've got our potatoes. Those potatoes are already pre-boiled, uh, but then we've we've got this one. So why don't we go ahead and start with? Let's go ahead. And, if you haven't boiled your potatoes, yeah. uh, you can go ahead and put your pot of water onto boil. Yep. Yeah. And if you've got some of the uh, you know the the gnarly guys. You can cut the those eyes. guys out if you want to, we just use or just pick them out with your fingers like he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> These are the tools that work the best. Yeah, just be a caveman, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you got your potatoes. Everyone's cooked potatoes, I'm sure. So we have our cold water. Always put them in the cold water. And then we're going to turn it up to high. And the then one. the other one, wrong one, of course. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so that's going. And while that's going, where would you like to begin? So we want to go ahead and prepare our sour cream okay. uh, for the potatoes for the end. So we have our, our lemon and we have a zester or a rasp. You can use either or. What I usually do is whatever bowl that we're going to go ahead and mix everything in, it just goes zest right into it. Okay. Works out the best. So and we're just going to zest half the lemon for all the amount that we're, that we're making. Okay. You know, and this is just for like to dip the potatoes in. Right. Okay. This is basically just going to be in a, a sauce for the potatoes. For the people on Zoom, do you guys have a zester like this, or do you have like a little box grater that you're using with the fine side? What are you guys using? <clears throat> Something similar, not exactly. That's these are actually, the brand name on these are micro plates, okay. and you can find these. Yeah. Obviously, and they're they're very inexpensive. And they're they're well worth to have around your kitchen for anything. And we we shave everything with this, anything from zesting to shaving cheeses, even shaving chocolate. Oh, I mean, and they have different sizes too. So my wife peeked her head up when you said shaving. Chocolate. You can shave. <laughs> yeah, they're really they're, they're they're a really nice tool to have around the kitchen for sure. Yeah, yeah, garlic making like garlic paste. Garlic paste. I mean, you can go crazy with it. So we got our zest. We we'll set that to the side. We got our scallions. You can also use chives if you wanted to. Okay. We just opted uh, with the um, sc uh, scallions because it's easier to ship. I think. I think these. Yeah, the yeah, chives might have got a little bruiser. Scallions would get a little, little gnarly. So, so we're just trimming off the ends and the ends and, and any of the uh, if there are any brown parts off to the edge of it. And then we're just going to slice them nice and nice and thin. See how thin he's slicing those. And I'm just using the green parts, actually. Now, 
Well, you're using like, what's the knife called that you're using right there? Is that just, just a this thin is chef a, knife? Yes, yeah, this is just, well, I would say it's basically just your nine inch blade. Okay. You know, this is not typically a chef blade, it's, it's a little longer, t a thicker tang on okay. it. Okay. I just prefer a smaller, thinner blade. Okay. Just me. And the finer you can cut them, that, that they cut them at restaurants, I think that gives them like, doesn't that allow restaurants to charge people like 25% more the thinner that they can cut their onions? Is that... Are you really giving away all the <laughs> <No, yeah. laughs> it's, not, it's not cool, man. It's not cool at all. <laughs> Nah, and if you don't, then obviously, you know, I've got a lot of practice with this. If you can't slice them that thin, you can slice them a little thicker and then just come along and chop them up if you want to. Okay. Just, what you don't want to do is just start beating them with a doll blade. Yeah. And it starts to bruise Smash them it. and they start to oxidize a lot quicker and they start to turn brown on you. Okay. So the idea is why we want a good sharp blade is good sharp cuts is that you can keep, you keep the nice, you know, consistency of, of, the, of the product and it doesn't, doesn't start to turn on you. Okay. And that's one of the biggest things. Okay. So we have our scallions, our greens, basically. We're just gonna add that to our bowl with the uh, lemon zest. So we're just adding the greens to the bowl with the lemon zest right now. How's Facebook, any comments on Facebook? Not yet. Then we have our sour cream, basically just gonna add that to our zest in scallions. So if you got your sour cream in the, in the nice packets that we sent, just, you know, give them the old squeege into the bowl there. And we're just going to incorporate. Mm. It smells great. I don't know how it's smelling at home for you guys, but uh, it smells great already here. Then we're going to season with a little bit of salt and some fresh ground black pepper. I'm a pepper freak, so to me, you can like a lot of pepper. So if you guys like a lot of pepper, yeah. go for it. I'll probably take a little more pepper. And then we have that. We're just getting ahead again. We're all about prep, so this is basically going to be for down the road when we do presentation and service. It's all ready to go. Okay. So another another big reason why I wanted to bring Chef Firestone and, and chefs into this is like the whole presentation thing. Like we can, when we're cooking at home and we're, we're having fun and we're learning new techniques, it's always fun to learn how a professional would showcase the food in the restaurant too. So, and if it looks good, it does taste better. So. <laughs> and you want, you know, if people was paying the top dollar. That's right. You want if to people are sure paying for it, it should look good, good as well. well. And you're paying for your groceries and groceries aren't cheap. Same so. thing, yeah. <laughs> and it impresses your guests. I mean, if you're sitting around cooking and you get kind of those little touches that you add to it, yeah. that look kind of pro or what yeah. you see on TV, people are like, oh shit, that looks pretty good. Looks better. That's pretty cool. Nice. So our potatoes right now, like I said, this one here, it's going to be a while. So yeah. obviously we're ahead of the game on that. Yep. Um, any questions on anything so far? Any questions on the sour cream or where we're at right now? Are you guys all caught up with us? Yes, sir. We Everybody's are, good? yep. Yeah. All right, nice. Okay, we're moving along. Well, our next was good. We're going to move right to the steak then. Steak time. So we're going to go ahead and heat our cast iron skillet up. Now, what kind of temp do you want on the uh, cast iron? So initially, I'm going to crank that all the way to high and okay. just let it kind of go. We want to get that up to a good high temp because we want that initial sear to hit. Okay. So we get the Maillard effect again. Are you familiar with that? Yep. Go ahead, explain it. No, no. See what you got. Well, the Maillard effect is basically when fat and heat meet, and that it makes that crust. So right. scientific, tasty crust. Yeah. So <laughs> that's how yeah, I would describe it. Very close. So <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Um, it's where the amino acids and the sugars react to about anywhere from 285 to 350 degrees is okay. where you're getting an initial browning effect. Okay. Is what it is. So that's the whole whole explanation. Of that. There's always a little science to food too, man. Yeah, absolutely. So. so uh, so what we, and, and that's another question that I usually find people asking is like a lot of steakhouses do like the X's, you know, yep. they make the diamonds on their, on their steaks and, and that's good too, but it's kind of like you're, you're missing out on impacting the entire steak with that flavor that the crust gives it. Right. Would and you, would you agree? I, I, I was guilty of that coming up back in the day too, when, you know, started out as a young chef and apprentice. 
the chefs that you work for, and especially in the, in the U.S., you know, it was get the diamond marks on it, make it look pretty. And it does look ever, nice. It looks nice. Yep. But if you learn to put a good crust on it, especially like I always go back to it, like the Argentinians, man, they they got it down. You yeah. watch some of these guys, you look like uh, if you want to watch some good references, uh, Francis Malman. Okay. Is one of the chefs. So you want to really tune into somebody who's got meats down, especially cooking with open fire and stuff like that. Um, and Lennox Massey is another one. Just mm -hmm. unbelievable what they do to meat as far as what they're trying to achieve from it. And that is getting that crust on there and get that flavor. Yeah. You'll see a big difference between that, especially when you get into grilling outdoors over charcoal. Like at the restaurant, we cook, we cook all our meats all over hot coals. And the biggest reason I do that, other than it looks really damn cool, <laughs> is it gives it such a good crust and such a flavor on it. And right. that's what we were trying to achieve all the time. Okay. Um, and when you're able to take even what we're showing here today, you'll be able to achieve that as well on your grill outside when it's, when it's better night, when, when you're ready to grow outside in better weather. Yeah. And you'll see the biggest difference. Yeah. And just the amount of juice that it holds in too, because you're searing it in. You're holding all that juice inside the steak. It makes right, a big difference right. as well. And then if you're cooking with charcoal, then you have the added flavor of the crust plus the flavor of the charcoal. Just a real light kiss of smoke. It's not yeah. too hard. Yeah, nice. it's crazy. Nice. So what would you go to first? Like, are you going to salt the steak first? How do you want them to... Well, I'm going to um, make sure this is really, really hot. So the way I do it now, there's a lot of different ways people are going to say, do this, don't do that. This is just yes. my personal preference in the way that it, we're able to achieve what our goal is with, with our product at the restaurant in a way that we've just developed it over the years myself and working with my sous chefs and whatnot. Uh, I take my salt and I'm basically just salting the top and then the sides. I like to get a nice even crust on it of salt. Then I'm gonna lift it up and it's gonna season this side here. Now if you're watching at home, or if you're watching on Facebook, you can see the size of this steak. This is a two inch thick bone in ribeye. Right. Um, now, even if it was an inch thick, you would use, you would coat it fully with salt like that. Yep, yep. And what I do, even with my, whether it's going to be in the cast iron skillet or over the hot coals or whatnot, uh, once we get our temperature where we need to be, um, we're going to start with what I call the naked side. So there's no salt on this here. And we're going to go straight in. Now, this is a ribeye, obviously, and it has a lot of fat content to it. We don't need to add any fat to the pan. A okay, lot of times, if you're going to use like a, if it's a fillet or something like that, it's a low fat content. You need to introduce a little bit of fat to your pan to help that caramelization start. And would that be butter or would that be like avocado oil? Butter. Or uh, well, you know, you can start with a little bit of butter. I would recommend you use avocado or grapeseed oil because okay. it'll have a high flash point. Okay. Um, olive oil you can, but olive oil will burn real quick on you. Yeah. Uh, especially the high heat and yeah. it'll get real funky especially if you use a really really good extra virgin olive oil it flash point is very low yeah and that'll give you a really funky flavor to be honest with you but if you want to do with some you could even just put a you don't even have to put it in the pan yeah so if you took a piece like a fillet or something and you just rub a little bit of oil on there yep and stir it that's plenty because it will it'll, it'll start to brown on itself but you just need to introduce a little bit of fat super yeah super um so so we've got the salt on the sides and just on one side. And then when you're going to add this to the pan, now are we waiting for the pan to start like smoking? Is yeah, that what we're we want it. Uh, we're almost there. I mean, my hands are kind of used to that. Don't touch yeah. the pan. <laughs> um, you can start to see the smoke starting to come off there. So no, we're getting pretty hot here. Um, cool. And we're yeah. going to give it another second. And we're going to keep that on high. We're even going to leave it on high when we throw that steak in there. Okay. We're going to turn it down once we get it to where we're starting to brown. Then we'll bring okay. it down a little bit. Okay. But we never want to drop the heat down too much on it. I'll move this stuff over here yeah, yeah. for you. So this is ready for you. So anybody have any questions at this point? Anybody have any questions at this point? All good. Everybody's all good. Okay. So uh, you can go ahead and have your butter and your thyme and your rosemary and your basting spoon over by your cast iron skillet, just so you have that handy, uh, as well as your, your tongs or you know, he's using, um, what are those called? Tweezers. Tweezers, that's it, tweezers. <laughs> we like using these at the restaurant because obviously we can manipulate really quickly, but also when it comes to your bigger tongs, you had your other ones, like the big tongs you have, they're fine, but like I can stick this in there. Oh, okay. Especially when we're on the grill. So if it's a bone, I can stick it in there. I'm not making a large hole in it, so it just makes it easier to manipulate and move around and adjust on the grill as well. As to where the bigger tongs, you have to be able to right, to right, grab and smush it down. So yeah, I think we just added uh, tweezers to our Amazon yeah. cart. <laughs> so our pan's nice and hot. We're gonna go ahead and place the steak in. 
Yeah, they're smoking all in the in the zoom. Oh yeah. You okay. want to hear that good hard sizzle? That's that's what you're going for for sure. So everybody, go ahead and add your steaks. You should be able to hear that nice sizzle. Yep. So you want your salt side up, naked side down. And so. one of the biggest things about cooking, you got to get in there. Your hands have to be part of the system too. Um, it's not just about your sense of smell, your taste, or your sight. The, the, the feel of everything as you're going through it too. And you, you, you learn a lot and you pick up a lot when you're cooking. When you actually get in there and feel what's happening to the meat itself okay. or any protein or anything you're cooking at all. Um, it just brings all your senses together when you And start what about cook. raw meat on your hands while you're cooking? What about it? <laughs> it's good meat. It it's good meat. It's good. <laughs> so, so, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. You can, use your tongue. you can always take a little peek, see how you're doing. We're starting to get there. Come this way, chef, so you can see on that camera. Oh, sorry. So, did you guys see how he turned the steak? Now, uh, there's a lot of videos out there, a lot of chefs that cook different ways, but a lot of people will say, don't. As soon as you put the steak in, don't touch it. Let it be. So why are you recommending we, we turn it and stuff like that? Well, I want to make sure that we, because you get some hot spots, some cold spots. I want to get that even crust. For me, it's all about building that good crust, that good sear all the way around. I mean, we're going to do on each side. We're even going to flip it up on the side to get this browned off. Mm -hmm. In a pan, you kind of definitely want to do it, because we're cooking in a pan, we're going to want to turn it and manipulate a lot. Okay. Now, if we're over hot coals, that open, flame or that open hot is going to sear the outside. Gotcha. So we're not going to really get that with in a pan. Oh, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So yep. if you're on a grill and those hot coals, so around. much heat coming, you got like 700, 800 degrees coming up, it's going to cook those outer edges for right, you. Right, right. That's the way this one is not. And I now, still if you need to turn the down. fan on on your exhaust, feel free to turn your, your fan on low <laughs> if you get so, a little smoky in your kitchen. So. And I haven't even turned the heat down yet because you can see this, a, this big piece of meat. Yeah is going to take a lot of heat from this pan, gotcha. which means if you turn this heat down, it's going to get too low. And you're going to start to stew the meat instead of actually searing it off and getting a nice brown on it. Okay. So now we have some, we're starting to render a little bit. Oh, come this way, chef. There you go. I got to go right-handed and left-handed here. <laughs> so as you can I'm see, we're starting to, now I want to tilt that pan a little bit, get some of that fat to run underneath the steak. That'll help brown it. That'll help that uh, caramelization happen. How's everybody cooking on Zoom? Everybody looking good? <laughs> All right. We, no, we haven't really added good. any butter or any of the herbs yet. We want to get that first side seared off before okay. we go ahead and introduce the rest of these ingredients. Oh, nice. Got a lot of people watching on uh, on the Facebook. <laughs> and then I will format this whole video once we're all done and show what people are doing on Zoom. And that'll be posted to YouTube tomorrow or Tuesday as well. So the people that are watching live, uh, you'll be able to see what they're doing at home as well for the people that, that purchased the beer box. Whoa, it smells good. And you can see how that salt that we put in is starting to melt down. Well, that yes. heat is actually coming up through there, so it's starting to melt. And it's starting to bleed down through. It's starting to season, and that's exactly what I, we didn't, I didn't want to put on this. But a lot of people will put that salt on both sides to start it. But just for me, I happen to prefer this method. Ooh, that's looking good. No. I forgot to attach this light. So you can see that we're getting a nice... My art effect is happening for us nicely. Oh, yeah. Hopefully there's no smoke alarms going off all over the place right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll be great for the audio. If your smoke alarm goes off, it's a good thing. We're, we're cooking the, the right way. <laughs> now, here's a question for everybody. What temperature do they usually eat? What temperature do they think they should pull the steak out at? So I'm not using a thermometer. Right. But people at home using a thermometer, if they want medium rare, let's get some feedback on what temperature they think they should pull it off at. What, uh, so if you guys at home, what temperature do you think 
Like if you want your steaks to be medium rare, what temperature should you remove it from the heat at if you want medium rare? Any guesses? Any guess? Any guesses on the Zoom? <laughs> They're like, no, just <laughs> tell me. just said nope. <laughs> a lot of times you're going to read 125 to 135. Right. That's overcooked. Yeah, because then we got to let it rest. So Right. I, now, when I do it, I usually pull it out about 120. Is that what you do? I'm you a do 110 it? guy. You're a 110 guy. 110 to 115, okay. and I pull it off and we'll let it rest. Because okay. what happens when you're pulling off the heat? You it keeps cooking. It's called carryover cooking. Yeah, yep. It's continue to cook. So that rest time is two things. It's going to continue to carry over. That temperature is still going to come up to where we want it. And then it's also where we're letting all the proteins relax. And Especially this large of a steak. 100%. It's going to, it's going to yeah. continue cooking for Now, if for you're more of a medium person, bring it off at like 125. Okay. And then let it rest. Okay. Any more than that is a sin. <laughs> Especially for this overcooked. kind of steak, yes. Yeah, so. We're not cooking steak no more. Just go make a pot roast. And go right. Over. Right. <laughs> now, if they were to go to your restaurant, can they request well done? No. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to turn. We got a very nice curl. Gorgeous. Now, this is where we're going to start the season again. So, if you're at home on Zoom, how's your steak look? Does it look a nice crust on that side like he's got? And if it does, go ahead and give it a flip and don't be afraid to throw that salt on there. Throw a lot of salt on there. We're going to go ahead and throw in our herb. Okay. We have going in. Time right in off to the side. Again, we want to get a little bit of that fat down in there. You can feel that crust. So if you're able to touch it, give it a touch. And you'll feel what we're talking about is that crust. Those juices are sealed. Absolutely, that's what we're going for. So you're angling the pan in different directions to get the fat right. over to the herbs. Is that what you're doing? Right. So you notice that I put the herbs up on top of the steak because we know we're going to continue that high heat. If you leave the herbs in there, they're going to burn. Mm -hmm. They're going to burn. They're going to get bitter. Okay. So we're throwing them on top right now. Once we go and add some butter, we start basing. We'll drop it back down in. But all these oils are already in that pan. Right. It's all about extraction of the oils on these herbs. Okay. Um, but right now we're, we're just going to let it sit on top and it's going to just sort So of the it. fat from the steak that was in the pan that you see running down the pan as he moves it like there. Yeah. That fat pulled the flavor from the herbs right, right into the. And as soon fat. as they dropped there, you notice it snapped and crackled. Those oils were, were released right at that point. Cool. And that's what you're going for. So you're making essential oils with your steak. <laughs> Rosemary and thyme. So let's go ahead and take a peek. See it? We're starting to get that right there. It's nice. We're going to let that cook a little longer before we add our butter. And okay. then we'll start the basting process, which is going to help build more crust as well on top. And we'll be able to sear the sides with it. How's everybody's kitchens at home smelling right now? Oh, smells great. good? Oh, All right. Great. <laughs> okay. So, any questions? Are you guys, you guys are all doing good? I feel like the the explanations have been going really well. So, okay. you're adding more salt now. More salt, absolutely. And we're just adding our butter now. Go ahead. You can add a couple tablespoons of butter. Chris, is that regular butter or is that the truffle butter? This is the regular butter. Yeah, the truffle butter is going to be for later. Good question. <laughs> Give it a tilt. Shall we lift it up? Let that butter get underneath there. So you see that he lifted it up and let that melting butter go underneath the steak there. Now, this is the tricky part. You just want to make sure that you get a good grip on your pan. Give it a little bit of a tilt toward you. Your pan's going to be hot, so use the towel. So this is our base steak. It smells so good. <laughs> I hear. I knew it. Oh, there's the, the winner. There's, there's our, Who's the winner? Were we the, I think that was us. That, that's our smoke alarm going. 
<laughs> so, hey, buttery Rick, why don't you shut that down? I'm gonna turn the fan on. <laughs> this is adventures in live cooking. This is what we got. <laughs> so we're basting. We're just gonna continue to do that. Now you can see on the sides, as oh. we're basting, that fat's starting to caramelize on the outside as well. Look at how that butter is just bubbling on top of the steak. So, and as you take that butter and put it on the steak, that's continuing to cook the yeah, top of the steak. Absolutely, yeah. How's everybody's pans look? Do you have that much juice in your pan? If you don't, feel free to add more butter. Right now, I would suggest somebody at home take your, your temperature, your thermometer, go ahead and temp it on the thickest spot. Okay. Like right here. What, do you have one? I mean, we do. We'll see where we're at. So if you have a meat thermometer, go ahead and temp it on the thickest spot at this point. Yeah. I need to take a picture of him doing this. We yeah. need to have a picture of him holding a meat thermometer. <laughs> okay. So he is now putting the steak over on the rack. Yeah, I'm just, just a little easier for us to go ahead and tip it. And now he's temping it. Oh, is this thing accurate? Yeah, it should be. Sorry, what temperature were you looking for? We're looking to pull at 110, 115, you said, for medium yeah. rare? Mm -hmm. Now 120, 125 for medium. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. What's your oven temp, temp Fred? Oven that temp was a... supposed to be 400. Oh, I was looking over there for the camera. Yeah, yep. so right now, I'm not even going to go in the oven with this. Oh, well now what's everybody's temp set? Because we're uh, probably already at temp on our steak yeah. here. Oh, <laughs> Buttery Rick just pulled the battery out of the smoke detector, so we are safe here. <laughs> on, uh, not quite. Not, not You're about 104? Of okay, go ahead and throw yours in the oven then. Yeah. Um, and bring that up to a temperature that, that if you want to go medium or medium rare, yeah. whatever temperature you want to go with. So we're going to go ahead and let our steak rest. Now what about all this juice in the pan? We're going to leave that? We're going to drain a little bit of this off because we're going to cook our potatoes right in the same pan. All right. Yeah. So we need to... So at this, so at this point your steak should be in the in the oven, or if you're already at a temp that you want to let it rest at, if you want medium rare, we want one, 110, 115? 115. 115, let's go 115, 115 for yeah. medium rare. Or if you want to do medium, 120, 125, and that's where you're, you're letting it rest at. So that's where you're gonna bring it to, in the oven, okay? He did drain a little bit of the juice out of the cast iron pan. You can just dump that in the sink, or, <laughs> or you could pour it on top of your steak if you're... Yeah if your steak is out on top. So you can set it aside, put it in a bowl if you want to put it on top of your steak. Cool, so we've got our potato still boiling and that's probably getting close. So you want to get your potato till you can basically you pierce, pierce it with a fork? Yep, 100%. Okay. Hey, okay, sorry to be high maintenance here. You got so it, we, no, no high. But we got our temperature at about uh, 108, do we let it rest or are we putting it in the oven? Well, you've got it at 108. Are you going for medium rare? Medium rare. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you could probably keep it in the pan for just a little bit longer if you want to just bring it up to like 112, or you can throw it in the oven if you want to bring it up to like 115. Either one of those is going to be fine at this point. It's going to, it's going to cook pretty quickly to get those last few degrees. Yeah, and if you throw it in your oven, it's going to go quick. Yeah. I mean, it's going to come up to temperature pretty fast. Once you get about that, no 105 degree temperature and you throw in the oven, it goes real fast. Right. Yeah, right. there's no stall in it. it right. It, yeah, when it goes, it goes. Yeah. It happens, so don't forget about it when it's in there. I've definitely done that before. <laughs> Everybody's done it. Yeah, especially if there's garlic bread in there too. It's always gonna burn, it's just the way it goes. Or if you're my mom, it's the, cr the crescent rolls at Thanksgiving. Always. Still eat them though. It's a thing. <laughs> If the crescent rolls aren't burnt, it's not Thanksgiving. So, no. just a question. Uh, ours was like uh, 90 degrees, so probably okay. got it in the oven. 
Yep, yep, go ahead and throw, ours is already at temp, so if yours is to just at 90 degrees, uh, go ahead and throw yours in the oven. As long as you got a nice, good crust on both sides. If, it, you know, if your crust needs, need more crust, then go ahead and keep it in the pan for a little bit longer. Got that. Cool. Crust, everybody's nice and crusty at home yeah, cooking yeah. on Zoom. So the Sunday, why not? Yeah, it's a, it's a crusty Sunday. Speaking of Sunday, <laughs> we forgot to mention that you know, it's Sunday, right? It's Sunday fun day. So yeah. I hope everyone, if you are taking part, there's either some wine or beer involved. Yeah, I've got a, a, a non-alcoholic hey, hazy IPA. Hey, well, hey, cheers, man. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I did try to offer them. Buttery Rick has a nice selection of cocktails. So when they got here at like 11 o'clock this morning, I did offer them. <laughs> Not that we wouldn't. <laughs> but I wanted to be able to stand upright with you folks to get through this. Yeah. Ralphie gave a Ralph, Ralphie cheers. cheers. The good job. We knew Ralphie was cheersing. Okay. So, while the steak's resting, you want to do the smashing of the potatoes? Yeah. If everyone's at that point. I think so. Okay. I think everybody had their potatoes done ahead of time, I do believe. All right. Um, if not, they can just kind of catch up. Is everybody up as you know. comfortable where their steak is at this process? Are they in the oven? There's a couple people that have their steaks in the oven. Okay. And I think a couple people are really close. So. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So. Now's the point we want to take our potatoes. You can use a plate. You have this beautiful press yeah. that we're going to use. We're going to basically flatten out our potatoes. Um, I would suggest is using some cling wrap or saran wrap, whatever you have. So go ahead and get some cling wrap or parchment paper if you've got that, and you can place that on your cutting board. Right. Now someone's going to use a plate. Everyone using a spatula or someone, anyone using a plate? Is anybody using a spatula or a plate to, to smash their taters? Use the plate. Okay, we've got a plate. The plate worked good. Okay. One plate worked good. Okay, so with the, I'll demonstrate with a plate. So you're basically just going to take your potato, put it down. You can put saran wrap on this too if you want so it doesn't stick to it as well. And we, when we press it, we just want to press nice and evenly from the top. These potatoes are cold. So, <laughs> so that's our smash. That's what we're going for. Perfect. Now, would you call that a potato pancake? No. No. <laughs> you no. probably would. And then we're going to smash our other one, nice and even. So you're looking for about half inch of thickness? Yep. OK. And that's over out on those, so. And you should have your Cajun seasoning handy as well at this point. I am going to wipe that pan out because there's a little heavy of salt in there. Okay. Um, do they put the truffle butter on the steak at some point? What, what we're going to wait until we slice the steak to do Okay. That. Yeah. So he is wiping out the pan. There was a little bit of extra salt in there, so he's just cleaning that up. Plus some of the fat in there. I mean, it's going to still be there. It's a little dark, so we don't want our potatoes to look real. Okay. Real nasty, so. Now we're gonna add our butter. I tend to do a heavy seasoning when I do my seasoning in a cast iron pans as well. Okay, so we're adding a little butter to the pan. Yeah. Everyone is different, right? Yeah. So about a medium, medium to high heat. Okay. The Cajun seasoning, we just put the Cajun seasoning right on our potato. No. Any salt? I did not add salt on my You potatoes. didn't have salt in here? Yeah, so we'll put a little bit of salt. Medium high is where we're gonna brown these up. So you put the season side up again. So well, yeah, because the potato's a little delicate. I don't want to uh, lose parts of it. So okay. We'll season them on the other side when it comes up. Gotcha. Everybody's taters in their in their pans now. Any questions on Facebook? 
No, it's just a bunch of people watching. That's good. Look at that, a little bit more butter. Butters always make it better. Would you say to just add butter to everything? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm on statin, so I can say okay. that. <laughs> now, we're going to go ahead and just lift a little bit. Get some of that fat underneath there. Are yeah, you guys seeing how he did that? Lift up your taters and then kind of tilt your pan so the butter goes underneath. So when I made these the other night, I did them completely wrong. <laughs> you notice that? <laughs> what did you do wrong? Well, I smashed them into the pan. Oh. And they really crumbled. I'm gonna give this a little splash in the oven. Okay. Let's sit there for a little bit. If your uh, steaks are in the oven, go ahead and make sure you temp them, give them a check. Okay, we're gonna flip our tater. Tater flip. It smells awesome. Now we're gonna go ahead and see a little cage on the top side of these. Crab legs now. <laughs> I like his style. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. you would. <laughs> and his uh, his wife is away in Mexico right now, so he is he can eat anything he wants. <laughs> All the butter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's three two liters of Coca-Cola in the fridge, Mom, just so you know. <laughs> oh, you just got a text. <laughs> All right. Those potatoes look and smell wonderful. Everybody's steaks doing good in the oven? Or are they resting now? Everybody's doing good. Good. It's almost time to eat. It's pretty close. I'm just going to go ahead and shut this off. Okay. I'm going to lean right in there. So he just went and turned the, the heat off. We're going to let the residual heat from the pan do the rest of the cooking. That's what's also great about cast iron. So Wouldn't you good. agree? I mean, it's the best. You can shut the heat off. It'll continue. And I know everyone's already talked about it, but if you're ever anywhere and you see a Griswold pan, which, where are they made at? They were made, you made here. Yeah, the right. If you can find them, always Yeah, we did flip up. the potatoes. Um, the potatoes. Yep, yeah, go ahead and flip the potatoes and make sure you season the other side with the, uh, the Cajun seasoning, too. Yeah, good. yeah, everybody's doing good. Cool. Let's take a peek. We'll just put a little heat to sit there a little bit. We don't want it to serve it cold, but... Uh, Definitely don't have to be screaming hot as well. Yeah. A lot of people think you right off the grill onto the plate is never what we want to do. That's why I'm always looking for that rest time. Yeah. Now, um, what is another reason for the rest? Like, well, the biggest one is so all those proteins relax, and because if you cut into a steak right if it comes off the off the heat source, the cooking source, it bleeds out right away. And actually, yeah. it's not blood; it's the juice that's coming out of it. Yeah. So to help that retain, you've got to let it relax. Let those proteins kind of. Uh, reabsorb everything and then it holds it in okay you ever seen a steak that's uh that bleeds right away because it's been sliced cut into too quick and the other thing you'll find it's a lower grade of meat will also bleed out oh interesting yeah. okay and, uh, so uh, the higher grade higher fat content to yeah, absorb and it holds is it in. Is? Yeah. okay yeah. let's go ahead and see what Yeah, I and mean, we're gonna let that set for a minute and then we're gonna get ready to, as we call, plate up. 
clean so it up. We have a nice board here that we're going to be using. This is just our display board. So what we're going to do is we're going to serve everything uh, on the one platter. I mean, you could put the potatoes on another plate if you wanted to, but we're going to go ahead and slice the um, steak. You know, we have our sour cream ready to go off to the side. Uh, and then we go to presentation, we're going to go ahead and slice our, our meat. We're going to pull it up, we're going to cut off the bone and slice and then basically reassemble. Okay. And then we'll put our potatoes on to the side and then that's how we would serve it at the restaurant. So Wonderful. We'll set this to Now where'd you get the, that fancy uh, plate board? Actually a friend of mine uh, gave it to me. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And that's what you use at the restaurant though, right? Yeah. So he'd made them? Is that? A no, he had it, and then he's basically said, here, I don't use it, take and it. And are those dishwasher safe or no? No, these are not, these have to be <laughs> hand washed, yeah. So and you can buy those online. We just happen to use these uh, from time to time. Gotcha. For the gotcha. bigger steaks, yeah. So your, your dishwasher guy has to hand wash those? 100%. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I like the, the evil smile that you yeah, gave yeah, when you yeah, said that. Yeah. It's a panded move. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. So. Well, I've just been watching this whole time. This has been really fun for me. <laughs> and uh, the steak looks amazing, smells amazing. Everybody's steaks at home looking good. So we're going to come right over to the board now. Now, I'm about rare on this one, which is fine for All me. Right. So, everyone has a thin blade knife. I mean, I wouldn't recommend using a, let me see your chef, the thicker knife for cutting off the bone. This is a little thick. I wouldn't use this too much for me. Uh, that's Hold why it down I, here so they can yeah, see Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of to put the bone out with these. These okay. are for cutting vegetables and whatnot. Um, I use two knives myself just for me. That's what I usually do. Okay. I use one for cutting off of the bone. And then I always keep one that's super, super sharp for slicing. Okay. So it, that's just a personal preference for myself. So okay. we're going to grab our bone at the top. As you can see, the meat portion is away from my body. And truffle butter is going to go on soon. I heard a question about when the truffle yeah. butter is going to This is our bone. We're just going to transfer the bone right to the plate. I know you can't sit. I'll bring that over and show you. Oh, you have it? Okay. Yep. Now our slicing process starts. So I'm going to start at the bottom of the steak. You slice them nice and thin. Yep. And you're slicing against the grain. Now that makes it easier to eat as well. Right, it's yep. More tender. Now, we're going to transfer. There's a couple ways of doing it. You can have your bones laying either way you want. You can go slice by slice. I try to go through and just pick up the whole thing out with my blade. Just watch that sharp edge, obviously. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I've been in the middle of service and forgot that and have cut myself. It does happen. <laughs> if you're going to play with fire or play with knives, two things are happening. You're going to get cut, you're going to get burnt. It's going to happen. So you're just kind of positioning that next to the bone? Yeah, just trying to put it back to its original state. That's what you're kind of looking for. Just lay it open. I always want to wipe. This is where you put your truffle butter on now. Okay, so you can go ahead and put your truffle butter on. And you're just, just basically going to lay that. Do right. you want them to like spread it on or just kind of set it just, on? I just usually take dollops and just kind of drop it on there and it'll slowly melt. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Now we're going to put so our potatoes. So for the folks cooking on Zoom, you go ahead and add your truffle butter right to the top of your sliced steak. And then there's our potatoes. Yeah, your potatoes look a lot better than mine did. <laughs> my, <laughs> I've served them to my father, and he's yeah. If you do them again, uh, I sometimes you could use the baby reds work really nice too. Okay. And a smaller potato. Okay. You'll see that sometimes for the first few times it's just a little easier to work with. Yeah. Know? So then basically that is your your final dish. There we are. I usually take a little more salt, obviously, because that's me and just put it right on top. A little salty finish. Yeah. Now we don't have the truffle butter here. I forgot to uh, get that. <laughs> so we're without the truffle butter, yeah. but we are with the original cooked steak. So. Yeah, we have the nice <laughs> cooked steak, so. Go ahead, you can come around here if you want to get a picture for it. How do we, we also do? have Megan from Firestones with us too. 
how did everyone's stakes come out? What's that? How, how did everybody's they... stakes come out? Yeah. Everybody has them sliced already and, and cooking? They all had to do their own cooking. I had a chef come in to cook. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everybody's good? All right, let's go ahead and give it a taste, shall we? Uh, yeah, host, you're, have your host come in and get a taste. That's who should yeah, get Yeah, come taste. on, Buttery Rick. Yeah, so we you're to welcome to use forks thing. at home. I think uh, we're probably just going to use our fingers. Last time I was in my pajamas. Yes, you were in your pajamas last time, so you were not on camera. You help yourself at your house. <laughs> your rules. Look at that camera there, Richard. Mm. <laughs> He's your heart out, Jim. My, my brother's one. Is he? All right. <laughs> this is good. Very Thank good. You. Yeah. All right, let's get a piece. No, let's let's show everybody what the middle looks like. Oh, wow. So, nice. that that's nice. is magical right there. Yeah. So, that's considered rare? That's medium rare for me. Okay. Oh, man. I, I can mm. hear you over there. I know. Oh, boy. Oh. Mm. Sorry if I'm chewing into the microphone, but. That's darn good. <laughs> mm. Maybe I'll mute the microphone <laughs> while I'm eating. Mmm. <laughs> so much flavor. Finger licking good. Finger licking good, Buttery Rick says. Mm. And some tater. Let me know when I put my battery back in. <laughs> yeah. So, is everybody yet that's cooking on Zoom, are you guys eating yet, or how close are you? Mm. Thank you. Mm. How's everybody at home? Are you guys uh, eating yet, or? Um, getting ready. Getting ready. Getting get ready. ready. Mm. All right. Getting ready. We have, ready. we have company coming to enjoy it with us, so we got to wait for that. Nice. You're sharing. Here. Bless you. Had I known it was going to be this good, I wouldn't share. <laughs> <laughs> he said, if I'd known it was going to be this good, I wouldn't have shared it. Mm. Exceptional. So good. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's eating time. Now we're now we're breaking bread together digitally. Uh, any questions on the Facebook? Cool. All right. Well, I think that's that's all we got. I'm gonna stay on uh, just so that I can hear everybody in, that's on Zoom chewing in my ear <laughs> and see what they think. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had this experience because I've got headphones in where other people are chewing in your ear. It's interesting. <laughs> if it's really quiet and all you hear is chewing, is a good sign. Yes, yes, yes. Quiet and chewing. Yeah. The, the sound of gnashing teeth is always a, a good yeah, sign to yeah. a chef. So, now, what would you say is the best steak that you like to cook? Like, what's like if you're at home and you're like, I want the best steak I can have. What what, I, what is I'm, your go-to? I'm a bone-in ribeye guy. Okay. Uh, another one is called the hanger steak. Okay. A lot of not a lot of people know about that one. So that's a really good cut too. Um, it has a lot of flavor for it. It's not a real high fat content okay. uh, steak, but it's got uh, really good flavor. A good strip steak. Okay. I mean, I, just, I love New York strip. I'm a New York yeah. strip guy. No, do you prefer dry aged? Yeah. Or wet aged? You know, I, I can go either way. I love a dry aged steak. Yeah. I dry aged my own at home. Yep. Um, they have their own dry ager at, at Gordon's. I mean, there is nothing like a taste of a dry aged steak. It is. It's not it's, for everybody. A lot of people it's don't like as we refer to it as that nutty flavor. Some people just don't like it. There's Me, some I funk love to it. it. Yeah. And we've had them aged out. Now, normally for the restaurant, we'd like to go 45, 50 days. Yeah. Um, we monkeyed around one time, did a tallow age where we went 150 days. Right, right. We filmed that one. You can check that out on the Gordon's uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Where he dipped. You got to be ready for that. Yeah, <laughs> was it pretty pungent? It was phenomenal, but it's funky. Yeah, so yeah. 150 yeah. days dry age. Yeah. It was a really interesting process. So they took the entire loin and then had rendered beef fat melted 
and he just kept dunking the whole sub subprimal into the rendered beef tallow, coating it. Just like catering. Yeah. Just dipping in. It was. Yeah. I mean, it was what it looked like, uh, like a like a cake when it was done. Yeah. Even though it was just icing all over it, and then, but it wasn't. <laughs> and then threw that in the dry aged for 150 days. You said it was over. Yeah, for that's, sure. It was that's, like that's amazing. Days. So. Um, or 100 days. I forget. Yeah. It was so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> I remember doing that video. It was fun. The guy that the guy that purchased it was a uh, he was a good a good fun one to record. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Kelly, he's a, he's a character. <laughs> he's one of our favorites, good dude. Mm. How's everybody looking on? Yeah? <laughs> mm. He said, I heard, oh, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any hey, questions? Thanks, guys. Or, this, this is great. Is you have an thank opportunity to stake great anything. Job. Thank, you, thank you very much, Smith. Thanks for joining great us. Job. Enjoy. Chris? Really fun, and everything looks delicious. Mm. Sorry, I've got a mouthful of steak right now. <laughs> <clears throat> well, thank you, everybody. I think we'll go ahead and end it here. Does anybody have any questions before we go? <clears throat> no, I'm getting ready to eat it, so. Yeah, thank you. Good. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a great Sunday. Thanks for joining us. If you want to learn more about Firestones, head to firestoneskitchen.com. You can check them out on all the social medias. This is Chef Barton Firestone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. They all say thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> okay. End stream.